Hello everyone, I'm Deborah from Deborah Dell's Craft Room. Today we're going to make a little duckling on a mini bottle gourd. I hope you enjoy the video. These are the colors that we'll be using for the duckling. Spicy mustard. Lilac. Lavender. Light buttermilk. Spiced pumpkin. Red iron oxide. And black. These are all DecoArt Americana acrylic paints. When the project is dry, I will varnish it with DuraClear gloss varnish. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a template for the duck. I'm cutting a piece of cardstock and I'm going to have the wing coming forward like fingers so that uh, it can hold something. Now, I don't know if this is going to be too big. I would rather have it be too big than have to start over again. But here we go. Okay, I'm going to put it up next to the gourd. Oh, too big. I'm going to make it smaller. Cut some of the end off. And you just kind of make, you just kind of cut until you find something that works. Let me see. This one is almost the right size. Just a second. You have to make it with your own uh, gourd so that you can see if it fits because you know gourds are all different. Okay, let's see how this looks. Just a little more. Okay, now. All right. Okay. This little wing here will be, um, the right size. Okay, now first thing I'm going to do, this is the gourd, I'm going to paint it yellow. I'm going to paint it the spicy mustard color. I'm using a number eight. This is an angle shader, but you can use a flat. I just pulled it out because it's kind of wide.
Okay, now I've painted the gourd with, I think it was three coats of, uh, let's see what it is again, oh gosh, spicy mustard. And now I'm ready to draw. You first you have to find the best side of the gourd. You know, make sure it's not tipped or anything. Okay, I have it here. And if I'm going to draw, the first thing I'm going to draw are the wings. Having them come forward so they can hold something. Okay, now just draw lightly around. See that? Yes? Okay. Now, the other wing. And don't have the fingers, the ends of the fingers, be too far apart so that you can uh, put something between the hands. Have room for it. Okay, now. I'm working on it here. Clumsy today. Okay, now again, go around. There we go. Okay, now those are the wings. And they are a certain distance apart, not very far, because I'm going to draw an egg in there, an Easter egg, pretty big one. Just draw an oval, or you can cut an oval, or find an oval someplace that you think would be a good size, trace around it. There's, there's the egg. Okay, it's a little lopsided. I'm going to fix that. Or you can leave it lopsided. It doesn't matter. Okay. And we're gonna. I'm gonna draw the face later because I don't want it to. Uh, get smudged up. Okay, I am painting the egg lilac. It looks a little white, but it's got a, you know, the purple in it, so I like it. You can paint it any color you want, of course. Pink, light blue, maybe uh, light green. But I thought lilac would be nice.
Okay, I've put two coats of uh, lilac on the egg. And now I'm going to line it. And I'm not going to line it with black, although I did find my black paint. I'm going to line it with this, uh, what is this called? Lavender. Okay, you want to thin the, thin the uh, lavender paint out so that it's an ink-like consistency. I have a zero long liner. Okay. And now I'm going to go around the outside with the lavender. You don't have to go around the uh, the fingers of the wing with the lavender. Just the egg. We'll be doing that with black when I line the wings. came out pretty good. Now I'm going to get the black. I did not find my little bottle of black. So, but I found my big bottle that I refill my little bottle with. So, there we go. Lining is hard, so just do your best and know that you'll probably have to be doing some touch-ups. It's good to line as much as you can before you start shading so that you don't have to smudge everything up with, you know, your your pencil lines while you're working on something else. So there's one wing. Let me do the other. Of course, I goofed it up. I was hoping that I wouldn't, but... Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to use my number three round to uh, touch up these mistakes. Okay, so I um, touched up the lines, and now I'm going to now I'm going to shade. I'm using a number four flat because the areas are small. Okay, the way I shade, most of you know if you've watched my videos, put some water on the brush, touch it down, and then dip it into the paint. I'm using, I'm going to be painting or shading the wings first, so I'm using honey brown for the wings. And then you just shade around. Just a tiny, tiny bit of paint on one edge, one little point of the flat brush. Of course, if you learned another way to shade, then you sh just do whatever is comfortable for you. Honey brown looks pretty good, I think. Okay, there's one wing. Okay, the wings are shaded. Now I'm going to shade the egg. I'm going to shade it the same color that I lined it with lavender. And it shade around the outside of the duck's little fingers here. Now I'm trying to decide what to do to decorate this egg. 
and I do love dip dots. And I think I'm going to dip dot it with, uh, I don't know what color yet, probably lavender. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to dip dot the egg with uh, lavender. And I have to make a new puddle of paint because that puddle I was doing the shading with is kind of dry. And you always want fresh paint for a uh, dip dot. Okay. Alrighty. I think I'm going to make some of the dots look like they're going off the egg. I have to do that with a with a brush. Because I don't know how to make a half a dip dot. Okay, there's one dot going off. Do one over here, down here. If you don't like how this looks, don't do it. going to do a little bit next to the fingers, a little dot next to the fingers. Alrighty, I think it looks alright. Okay, now I'm going to draw the beak on. Where is the pencil? There it is. Okay. I'm not really sure how to make a duck beak. But we'll find out here in a minute how I do. I'm making an arc. And then underneath, I'm going to make another arc, a smaller one. Stretching out the top arc a little bit. Okay. So far, so far, so good. I'm going to make a, another arc in the center. That's the upper lip. And then I'm going to connect the bottom arc to the rest of it. Let's see how it looks. Well, it looks just like a duck. That's good. Very good. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to paint that duck beak orange. I hope this is in the center. Of course it isn't. Okay, let me drag it out a little bit, bring it over farther. Okay, 
I added some to one side, adjusted the whole thing. And hopefully it's not too big. I'm also going to draw the eyes in while I'm at it. Okay, I'm gonna use big eye thing, not dots. Okay, there's one eye. See that? Okay. You can use dots if you want. I just like to change things up for you guys once in a while. And I did my chicken with a dot eye. There we go. Okay. I think I'm going to paint the eye black first. That way when I'm painting the orange, I can overlap it if I make jagged edges down there. I'm using my uh, number three round. Okay. Okay, I have the eyes in. Now I'm going to do the uh, the beak. I should have erased that pencil mark before I started painting orange. So what I'm going to do now is just put some of that yellow on top of those pencil marks. And um, then paint over it again. There we go. We're getting there. While I'm letting the beak dry, I'm going to work on the eyes. I take the white and go around so it looks like the eye has been lined. I'm doing a second coat on the duck's beak.
If you want to make this into an ornament, some people put little Easter trees up in their house. You can just drill a hole in a top, just like my video says, how to prepare a gourd. And, um, and just put a, paper, uh, a hairpin in. And it can be an ornament. If it doesn't stand up, mine does stand up. A little crooked, I think. I don't know, maybe it's the angle of the... Anyway, what you can do is get a... Uh, a wooden heart painted orange because you know ducks have orange feet and then just you know glue it on you can hot glue it or you know white glue it the white glue might not stick as well as the hot glue but what I used to do with my gourds when I had to stand up a whole bunch of them I would take it out to my little belt sander and just touch it like that and it would expose part of the gourd, knock that little blossom end off, and then you could glue it to a wooden heart. If it wasn't winter outside, I would do that. But you know, kind of a big baby. Okay, now I'm going to finish the eyes to do you just take a little black and make it go round up at the top. There you go. I learned this, uh, this eye from one of my daughter's friends. There were a whole bunch of kids at the house, and everybody would, my daughter had a little loft upstairs, and the kids would come down one by one and visit with me for a little bit, and they were all artists. And um, this one kid came down, and I was trying to do the eye, and he said, oh, try this, and that's what I've been doing ever since. Okay, now we have to do the eyebrows and the eyelashes. Okay, wet the uh, brush, make the paint a little inky, and touch down and pull. Ooh, that's some eyebrow. Yeah. Looks like the eyebrows the girls wear these days, all dark and big. <laughs> There's another. Okay, there we go. I'll be touching up that first one. Then we're going to do the eyelashes. Three eyelashes. Okay, those are all right. Sometimes I have a hard time matching them up. Now I'm going to put a little more, another coat of black paint on the pupils here. You let them dry for a second. Well, a minute. And then 
put the little dip dots in, the little sparkles in the eyes. It looks all right. They're a little, little off kilter, but okay. Okay, I'm going to paint the stem spicy mustard. I was trying to decide if I should paint it orange or spicy mustard, but I think that spicy mustard is okay. Now I have to work on the beak. Okay, I have a really fine liner brush here. I don't even know what number it is. I'm gonna see if it, how it works. So far, so good. Except I stuck my fingers in the in the stem paint. Okay, pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna shade the beak with red iron oxide, which is a color that's been discontinued, but you can use any rusty kind of color or dark orange, burnt orange would be good. Look at that, it looks pretty good. Okay, now. Okay. His beak is uh, shaded. And I'm deciding I don't really like this egg without a line around it. It doesn't, it just doesn't look right to me. So I'm going to line it. And I'm going to try that last liner brush that I used on the beak so that, see if I could get a nice thin line without having to touch this thing up. Okay, so I've reached this point here, and I, um, I'm going to put a bow tie on the duck, and I'm also going to put some dip dots on, on his uh, stem. Okay, just going to... 
just because, you know, it's kind of plain. And I want it to be a little bit more whimsical. There he is, our little Easter duckling, holding an egg. He didn't take very long to make, and um, I think you'll enjoy painting him. I forgot to put the blush on the little duck. So I blushed his cheeks, and then I put some starlight varnish on the egg and on his beak. It's sparkly little hologram colors and you can only see it in a certain light but it's really cute and people will notice it in person. Maybe not on this video. So, thank you very much for watching my video of the little duckling holding an Easter egg painted on a mini bottle gourd. Please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so that you'll be notified of future videos. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now.